Hi everyone. Um, I had an interesting conversation the other day with with one of my colleagues, Cheshav uh, Gogolevsky, and um, about bang patterns. And it turns out that, that as we talked about it, I realized this would make a, a, a great little video. So we're going to talk a little today about about the bang patterns extension and why it's not as straightforward as you think it is. Uh, so let's get started. So we're going to of course enable bang patterns. Um, um, okay, and. So the idea of a bang pattern in Haskell is it allows us to have a strict uh, pattern. So if I write a function f bang x equals, oh, I don't know, uh, uh, 5, uh, let's say. Oh, I don't want to get uh, overloaded numbers involved, so let's not, let's not do 5. Um, let's do x. Um, so, so when I compile this, it, it succeeds. I get a little warning, but that's fine. Um, and then now, if I call it, if I call you know f5, I get x. If I call f true, I get x. Everything's everything's good this way. Um, but if I call f undefined. Uh, I get an exception, right? And that's because even though I don't use my variable x here, uh, it still is getting forced by that bang. That's exactly what the bang means. If I leave it out and recompile, and now if I say f undefined, that works just fine and it returns x, right? That's the laziness, that's the default in Haskell. And so in some sense, the bang uh, creates, a, it, it sort of overrides the default. It means oh, I want to force this argument. This is going to be a strict function. Um, and bang patterns work on more than than just function arguments. Uh, so maybe I have something else. Maybe I have, um, uh, let's see here, we can have z equals, I don't know, case unit of something like this, right? So here now I'm using a pattern, not in a, in a, in a function declaration, but in the, um, or a bang in the, in the pattern of a case. Um, and so this is gonna work just fine. Well, what's the value of Z? It's just gonna be Y. And that's because unit gets evaluated and it gets evaluated um, and that succeeds and then, and then, and then we throw it out. Um, if I have undefined here, and I try to evaluate z, well, then we, we blow up again. So this is this is all good, right? We are seeing that the bang pattern is working. Um, it is worth pointing out because this is a point of confusion sometimes. Case is actually lazy by default in Haskell. So here, because I don't ever use the value x, uh, this succeeds and, and will evaluate to y. Okay, so that's that's bang patterns. Um, but let's let's look at another example here. So let's look at let. Um, and so let we know is is lazy. So if I have uh, let y equal um, I don't know five in unit say, um, and then I try to run z two, well that's just fine. It's it's unit, no problem there. Um, and even if I have here undefined, right, let is lazy in Haskell. And by the way, I'm going to use a bunch of let uh, statements here. Where works exactly the same way. Let and where are sort of the same construct, but with two slightly different syntaxes. All right, so I compile this, and then I see what is e2. Oh, that still works just fine. No problem, because the let is lazy. Um, uh, so so this, this never gets evaluated. We sort of skip over it, because the y turns out to be unused. And... Now, if I put a bang there, well, now what happens? Now, if I type in z2, oh, we, we throw an exception, right? And this makes sense with bang patterns. But what I'm about to tell you is that this right here is not actually a bang pattern. Um, so let's explore this a little bit more deeply. So let's go back to z here with this case uh, undefined of, of x. And this bang, when we had a bang there, that is a bang pattern. So what, what do I mean by that? Let's say, instead of case undefined, let's say I have case true of true. I can say this, it's a bit strange too, but we can say it, right? And so when I run this, it'll actually compare, is true true? Well, sure it is, and so we return y, that's fine. If I say case true of false, that compiles, and then now when I run this, I get an exception, not exhaustive pattern, because it matches true against false. It sees that true is not false, and then and then we throw an exception. So that that also makes sense. If I say case undefined here, and I run that, and then now I get exception undefined, right? And that's because what GHC is doing is it's checking is this is this scrutiny, the thing between the case and the of, is that false? Well, to, to see whether or not it's false, we have to evaluate it. And when we evaluate it, we blow up. Okay, so so that's not going to work. Um, but what we see here is that this case undefined of false behaves very similarly to, I'll write it as z prime, 
case undefined of bang x. Whoops. Um, and, and that's because having a constructor here makes the pattern strict. We have to evaluate the scrutiny in order to check against the um, to check against the pattern. So both of these will blow up, right? But z, z blows up and z prime also blows up, and that and that's what we expect here. Okay, so that's what we see up here. Now let's go back to let for for a moment. So with let, um, uh, we see that without the bang. Right, just to remind us, without the bang, uh, oops, uh, z2, sorry. Uh, without the bang, this evaluates just fine. With the bang, it explodes. That's basically what we expect. But with let, we can also do some degree of pattern matching. So this is usually done with, with um, so-called irrefutable patterns. Right? If I say let um, you know, x1, x2 equal you know, 5 true over here, um, so here this kind of makes sense because maybe instead of five true, maybe I have some function that returns a tuple and I need to do some pattern matching so that I can then use x1 and x2 over here. This makes a lot of sense. But let, uh, let patterns are not just restricted to these irrefutable ones like tuples. So I can say something like um, uh, uh, maybe I have read maybe of one, two, three. Um, and I can do a pattern match like this. Let's say I know the read is going to succeed. Um, and here, oh, we're going to have a, a problem around types, so I need to give it a type. Um, and so in x, we'll just say in x column, column int, so that we know what type it is. Um, and I think we're going to need imp whoops, import text.read to get read maybe. OK, so this all works. And if I do z2, then I get the number 123, right? Read maybe, uh, for those of you who don't know it, read maybe has type read a to, what would it be? Be string, whoops, to maybe a, OK? Um, and this is much better than read, right? The normal read just uh, uh, throws an exception in case it can't, it can't read the, the string, can't parse the string. So read maybe is much better than read. Um, but here I want to say, you know, maybe this we, we, we have some string and it's coming from some configuration file and we're lazy and we're rushed or something like that and so we don't do proper error checking and we just want to pattern match against the test. This is useful to, to do this because sometimes we have subtle invariants in programs and it would be redundant to do error checking. Um, so this might be useful in, in practice. Um, but I want to go a step further and see what if we have let just x equal nothing, right? This is type correct. I can compile this. And now if I evaluate z2, well, sure, I'm going to get a non-exhaustive pattern match because we're pattern matching the nothing against the just. But what if I don't use x over here? I get unit. So even though something absurd is going on here, because let is lazy, we don't actually perform the pattern match. And we can evaluate this. So even if something really ridiculous, like this, let false equals true in unit, now I can write z2, and it evaluates, and no problem. So here, we see that this is lazy, even though it seems to be matching against a constructor. If I put a bang there, now, if I run z2, now I get my exception. And that's because the bang makes the binding strict. It is not a bang pattern, though, uh, because a bang, a bang pattern on a constructor, a constructor pattern is already strict, right? What's going on here is something else entirely. It's saying, don't evaluate the body until this let statement is evaluated. That's all that it's saying. Um, and it's not actually saying that we have to be, um, uh, that everything in here has to be evaluated. So one example of this is I can say just x in here. And if I say just undefined over here, now z2 is fine. It matches the just against the just, but it doesn't sort of work deeply. If I wanted to do that, I'd need a bang pattern. This is a bang pattern right here. Um, and so now if I run z2, now we're going to get the error because of this bang here. Actually, we, it turns out that we need both bangs um, in this case because we never use x. So without this outer bang, um, uh, 
the pattern would never get evaluated at all. So, so I find this quite interesting because it's not really a bank pattern. It's a separate rule in the language that just says make um, uh, uh, that this bank makes the binding strict. Um, so I would really much rather put the bang here because that's that's sort of morally where it belongs in that it's on it's on the equal sign. It's saying that this should be a strict equality. Um, but you know if we did this, if we really did this in Haskell, then you know every C and Java programmer would just sort of you know throw up their arms in disgust, right? Um, this looks ridiculous from that that standpoint. It fits perfectly in Haskell, but I don't think we're going to do this. The other place that it might be cool to have the bang is on the let itself, saying that this is a strict let. But then we couldn't easily mix strict lets um, with lazy lets, and sometimes that's useful. So we're sort of stuck with what we've got. But um, but it is sort of this curiosity of of bang patterns that they are they are really quite different in in these let and where statements. And I, I like to say that they're not bang patterns at all. Anyway, I hope this was interesting. Thanks for watching.